Hey everyone and welcome back for another Brutus Monroe video. Today we're going to be using the brand new dye of the month and this is called Beautiful Bobble and it is exactly that. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous dye. I went ahead and cut it out of some Raven cardstock so you could see what it looks like all cut out and I'm going to use that on my card. But isn't that stunning? It cut beautifully. I had no issues. Uh, and we're also going to be using this candy stripe paper. This is a 6x6 paper, and it's beautiful. And I went ahead and cut it out of this because I wanted some pieces. We're going to do some paper piecing, and I'll set this aside for another card. And then I also used some gold glitter stock because I wanted some of those pieces as well. So we'll use those on another card later. Here's a piece of some of that candy stripe cardstock. We're going to use the green. That's going to be our prominent color. And I am going to take the 6x6 paper and I'm going to cut it down to be an A2 size card. So we're going to cut it down to 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half inches. That'll fit the whole front of an A2 size card. And then that's how our little bobble die is going to look on the front of that. I am just in love with this die. It's so beautiful. You could make a lot of fun cards with this. Uh, we're going to take it a step further and do the paper piecing, but you wouldn't have to do that. And you could have some absolutely stunning cards uh, that you could easily make lots of just by using this die. I'm going to use a little bit of liquid glue on the background, and I'm only putting dots of glue in some areas that are prominent, like that might stick up or be a problem area, uh, just by putting it in and out of an envelope. But otherwise, you really wouldn't even probably need to put as much glue as I did down this isn't going to go anywhere and there aren't like some major pieces that would stick up. I just put it in some areas where I thought might be an issue. So we'll just stick that down on top of our candy stripe paper and look at how pretty that looks just like that. Just leaving it like that. You could very easily just, you know, stick this on a card front and call it a day. But we're going to paper piece some of those and this really wasn't hard. Like I said, I just cut it out and saved the pieces that I wanted, stuck this inside this little container and then I'll put some glue down and we'll glue down the pieces that I've grabbed. Um, another th beautiful thing to do with this would be, I don't know if you saw last month's where I used the last month's dye of the month. I did a stained glass effect. I think that this would be absolutely stunning with the stained glass effect. You could do the paper piecing like I'm doing. You could leave it just as is. That's beautiful. You could make an ink blended background or ink smushed background and stick this on top of that and that would be gorgeous. The possibilities are just about endless with this die and like I said I love 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 how this looks on the front of this card like this. Uh, but just adding this little paper piecing really just takes it up a whole nother notch. And we're just using a um, jewel picker or in this case mine's a crystal katana you can easily pick up your pieces, especially the small ones, because we're going to start getting a little bit smaller. I started with the big pieces and worked my way up, and I'm just filling in all those areas that I thought would be, you know, important to fill in. And so that's all I'm going to do. I actually turned on a little bit of music. This was not a boring process for me at all. It wasn't tedious. I just, I truly enjoyed the whole process of seeing it come to life. And looking at this ornament makes me think of the different traditions that we have as far as ornaments go in my family. We always, when the kids were little, just had the one tree. It was the family tree, and my husband would always put it up and put the lights on, and then the kids and I would typically decorate it, and then my husband would be the one to put the angel on top of the tree at the very end. And now that I've got kids that don't live at home any, or one that doesn't live at home and the other is, you know, busy with school and doing other things, I'm not sure how it's going to go. I imagine I'll get my husband to put the tree up <laughs> and put the lights on it and then I'll probably be the one to decorate it and uh, we'll, you know, we'll do it that way. I have begun doing a little bit more adulting in the sense that I have more than one tree now, now that my kids are a little older or a lot older, I guess, adults now. I have the one big tree, the family tree, and then I also have a prim tree, which is just my own little tree that I've decorated the way that I like it. So I've got like homespun type ornaments and, you know, like the little rusted snowflakes and things like that. So I love my little primitive tree. I just think it is so much fun to have. And I even made the little tree skirt for it. Or my daughter actually made the tree skirt. 
Uh, but yeah, that's one of them I have, and I've even grown to having a lot more trees that I just have plugged in throughout the house. Little ones that really don't need a lot of decorating, but I just find that it's a lot of fun the older we get. This Christmas will be different. This will be the very first one where my son will not be home. He's actually going to be deployed. Um, some of you know that he deployed for a short amount of time not that long ago. He was gone for about 45 days, but he'll be taking off again. And this time it'll be about nine months. That'll be the very longest I have gone without seeing him. And that just, uh, I'm already dreading that. So thinking about Christmas this year, I am going to force myself to get the house all decorated so that I'll be in the mood, even though he won't be around. We're, you know, we, we have done many Christmases without my husband. So we're gonna, you know, it's just a different way of doing it this time. And it'll, it's always good. Every, every day is a blessing and this one will be no different in that sense. So I'll tell you what, this will be the first Christmas with both of the kittens. Uh, we had Max at this time last year, but he really wasn't that interested in climbing a whole lot of st stuff. He was still very, very young, and it wasn't that long after that we got Miles, but it'll be interesting to see how they handle the trees up. All right, so I'm gonna get my card base ready. It's just some whitewash card stock that I have cut down to four or five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, and I scored at four and a quarter, so it's a side folding A2 size card. And then I'm gonna just trim a tiny little bit off of this portion of the card. And then we're going to use some liquid glue to adhere this down to the front of our card base. And then I need to get a sentiment put on there. So I'm going to grab the stamp set that's called Gingerbread Village. This has a couple great sentiments in it. It's got winter wishes and happy holidays. I'm going to use both of those. I am going to use a magic powder bag on the front. And then we're going to stamp our sentiment and emboss it using some Raven Ultra Fine Embossing Powder, which is just a very fine detail black embossing powder. And so I'll use my embossing ink to stamp out the sentiment right on to our card front and you know you might be taking a risk doing this but you can always cover it up with another piece of cardstock if you discover this just doesn't work mine ended up working out great it worked beautifully and so we'll just heat set that till that is smooth and melted and you'll know that because it'll go from a matte finish to a shiny finish and then we need to stamp our sentiment on the inside so we're going to go through the same process and then we'll ink that up with the embossing ink and stamp out happy holidays on the inside and then cover that with that ultra fine black embossing powder. Beautiful Raven embossing powder. And then heat set that till that is smooth and melted. And believe it or not, that's gonna finish off our card for today. So we're getting a jump on our holiday cards. It's that time of year. So if you liked this video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already done so, and as always, I will see you very soon in another video. Thanks for stopping by, everybody.